Hey everybody, usually my videos are short. This is going to be the first in a series of videos because the video is about 35 minutes long and I don't think anyone's ready to sit down and listen to me talk about God for 35 minutes. I've got a few things to say. First off, I apologize because my computer, Charlie, he, I guess he thinks that this is a good time to take up all Thai throat singing. And although these guys are good at it, Charlie is not so good at it. So for now, um, I apologize for the Altai throat singing noise. And thank you for enduring that and staying focused on the message. And two, if you can sit down and watch this all in one uh, clip, that's great. But before you do that, you want to learn about Josiah and hoping that you already understand the Exodus journey. But uh, if you don't, you need to understand the Exodus journey to see this. And you also need to understand a little bit about Josiah. It's a chapter, maybe two chapters. I'll put it on the screen, open up the book, familiarize yourself with that story, and you'll get so much more out of it. You can sit and watch these in succession then read that Josiah story, and then come back and watch these videos again. All of this is very much anchored in Scripture. I'm not putting my opinion out here. I'm putting Scripture out here. As such, you'll find that the more that you watch these videos, the more that you can glean out of them. I hope you enjoy these videos, and thank you so much for being here and for being a strong and willing vessel of the Father's message in a world that really needs his love. Amen. This video is about sanctification, more specifically the aspect of sanctification that I'm going to call the strengthening of the Lord. There are many things that can be taught about the strengthening of the Lord, and in this video, the Ruach, the Spirit of God, is placing it on my heart to brush upon how and why the Lord strengthens his people in making the simple point that the Father does, in fact, strengthen his people. So, be encouraged if you are a member of the Savior's congregation, because strength is part of the promise of salvation to you. In this video, you will be given several scriptural examples to drive home the point that the Lord's intention is to strengthen you as an individual and to strengthen his people as a tribe. Part of being saved is becoming strong. Do not be discouraged and do not fear. Only have faith and experience God's love in its fullness. If you or your community is weak, be made strong in the power of Messiah, Yeshua. Now it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king went to Shaphan the scribe to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest, that he may count the money which has been brought into the house of the Lord. Then Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. All of that to indicate our spiritual setting during Josiah's time. Judah was really far backslidden, which will be confirmed here soon. Yet some of the men of Judah, namely Josiah the king, were very much dedicated to being moral and upright in their relationship before God and man. Fortunately, you know, it's weird that I say fortunately, but I say it on purpose. Fortunately, today we are going to learn from a time when salvation sprouted, yet was not given a chance to fully progress. So stick with me here. You'll be glad you did. Because even though we are starting with a sad story, I promise it won't end that way. Let's contrast this story, Josiah's story, with the wilderness journey from Egypt which represents death, to the promised land, which represents life, death being separation from God, and the promised land, life, being communion 
with God, fellowship with our Creator. The Exodus. On a scale of difficulty, this lesson is really difficult to learn, but I promise it's worth it. I know you can learn this if you try. I have faith in you. You are a blood-bought child of God. You are worth it. You are a son or a daughter of the King. And you are valuable, of tremendous value, and able to be filled with skill and understanding for the upward call of God. Okay, in Josiah's story, God gave Judah the leader they needed in order to be led through the proverbial wilderness and into the proverbial promised land. I know that doesn't make much sense now, but stick with me. I'm going to give you some, um, some backstory. The backstory is coming after this explanation. So you got to put on your thinking cap and hold on to some of these thoughts here. God gave Judah the leader they needed in order to be led through the proverbial wilderness and into the proverbial promised land. During Josiah's time, they were already in the promised land. But they needed to be led to the promised land. Leaded, led. However, God did not give Josiah the people who were of the right heart and mind to be led by him. Josiah did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Few, very few are described that way in scripture. Alas, though we press on, and I will teach you of a time when the strengthening of the Lord was not given enough time to cook, as it were, rendering the strengthening of God unable to make lasting worldwide change for God and his people. Ahead is a list of all the awesome things Josiah did in his zeal for God, in his integrity, in his faith. Once Shaphan brought the book of the law that Hilkiah had found in God's house to Josiah, Shaphan read the book of the law to Josiah. Josiah tore his clothes. Why? Remember just earlier when I said that the backslidden nature of Judah during Josiah's time would be confirmed? Coming up. We're up. Here we are. So, Josiah, the following is a paraphrasing from 2 Kings 23, 1-25, gathered all the top dogs and read the book of the law to the people. So he had the book of the law read to him. Then he gathered everyone together and he read the book of the law to the people and made a covenant before the Lord to keep God's commandments with all his heart and soul. Then he burned all the articles made for Asherah, Baal, and the host of heaven that were in the temple. He removed the idolatrous priests who burned incense in the high places. He brought out and burned the wooden image from the house of the Lord. He tore down the ritual booths of the perverted people that were in God's house. He defiled the high places and brought their priests from Judah. He defiled Topheth, so that no men could pass their offspring through the fire. He removed the horses that were dedicated to the sun, the altars on the roof, the upper chamber of Ahaz, and in the two courts of the house of the Lord, he broke down and pulverized. He defiled the high places that were east of Jerusalem. He broke in pieces the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images. He broke down the altar and high place at Bethel. And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, had made to make Israel sin. He took the bones out of the tombs on the mountain and burned them and defiled them according to the word of the Lord. He took away all the shrines of the high places in Samaria. Finally, he executed all the priests of the high places. Here we both see all the awesome things that Josiah did. And we see how far backslidden Israel was. After that, what was left? <laughs> nothing. There was nothing left. The people may as well have been in Egypt after the miracles were all completed. Remember that? God destroyed everything in Egypt and then took Israel out. That's basically what that scene looked like once Josiah was done with it. Israel had wholly backslidden into idol worship. Now that you see how far from God the people had gotten themselves again, no guide points for their moral integrity before God, full-on idol worship, and passing their children through the fire to other gods, we see that just 
simply saving the people from these things is not enough. But there is a journey involved here to bring them from their current state of moral depravity to a state of faith, which is obedience to God and his ways. So that's the end of this first video. If you're feeling a little bit lost, just keep in mind what the focus of this is. We're comparing and contrasting Moses' journey with Josiah's journey and gleaning from those two very parallel similar experiences. In this video, what we did was, is we started to take a glimpse into that, and before that, we gave you a little bit of a background of Josiah's story. You will feel a lot less lost if you open up uh, Chronicles and Kings and read those few chapters of Josiah. You'll have a better handle on that. I'm assuming that you do already have a handle on the wilderness journey, and we can walk through this cave of wonders together. In this next video, we dive deeper into the parallels between the uh, journey that Moses took with his people and the journey that Josiah would have taken with his people if it wasn't cut short because of the state of the heart of the people of Israel. We know that God can save anybody from anywhere. So the state of the heart wasn't the problem. It was the stubbornness of the heart that was the problem. Don't be stubborn. When you see the truth, don't be afraid. Instead, only have faith.